And for Georgia Tech, at forward, 6'6", 206-pound freshman from Towson, Maryland, number 33, Dwayne Farrell. Clemson is coached by Cliff Ellis. Georgia Tech coached by Bobby Crimmins. Officials for tonight are Joe Fonte, Pete Pavin, and David Dodge. Pete Pavia, excuse me, and we'll be right back with the opening tip-off of tonight's game as Georgia Tech and Clemson will do battle. We'll be back after this word from Natural Light. <laughs> My favorite chicken recipe is the delectable chicken Monica. This is chicken, it's the true art. Hello. Here's how we start. Hello. Hello, Monica. Don't hang up. I'll never do that again. Natural Light, the beer with the taste for food. You know, the blue on the label matches your eyes. Yeah, all natural, less filling. It's Natural Light from Anheuser-Busch. And the gold on the label matches your hair. In any given neighborhood, at any given time, there's one place that always seems to be a step ahead of the competition. One place you can count on for the latest kind of services. One place you know will have the most up-to-date products. That's the kind of place we work to be at NCNB. Still, it's our people that will make us the best bank in North Carolina. One neighborhood at a time. There are the matchups for tonight's game, particularly in the front court. We want to watch how things go there, Billy. That has been the strength this season for Clemson. And, of course, Georgia Tech's front line, one of the best in the country. It really is. And uh, what are you going to find in this Clemson team? An awful lot of good athletes out there. And what Cliff Ellis has been able to do is get that blend in the backcourt where he's got great size and rebounding ability to go with this tall front line. The opening tap is controlled finally by Georgia Tech. Freshman Dwayne Farrell will give it to the quarterback, Mark Price. Quickly, Clemson will start out in a man-to-man. -man. It's going to be Hamilton on Price, so we'll see right off the bat these two All-American contenders going after each other. Pass down inside, swatted out, but Price chased it down in the corner. A little different for Price to go up against Hamilton when Saturday went up against uh, Muggsy Bogues, and two entirely different type ball players. Clemson has used different defenses. They go inside to Sally, too strong, but he has fouled from behind. called on Glenn McCann from the Clemson Center. Real nice defensive play by Clemson on the overplays until the ball gets to John Sally and coming over the back is McCant. Sally has uh, grown into a seven footer, came here about six foot eight and a half, about 180 pounds. Really has built himself up, put on the extra inches and is now considered by a lot of people as one of the premier big power forwards in the country. Same high school as World B3. Mr. Sally hits both free throws. He's had problems from the line at just 51%. This is the up-tempo style of Clemson this year. McCants went up for the shot, and he is whacked by someone. We'll get the official call. They're going to call it against uh, Bruce Dalrymple, his first. One of the things that the fans will have to get used to watching this Clemson team uh, this year and as long as Cliff Ellis is going to be there, they're going to move the ball up to court in a hurry, take an awful, a lot of perimeter-type perimeter shots off the semi-break. So don't close your eyes when you watch this team. Billy, do you think that's the influence from the Sun Belt or more just Cliff in particular? I think uh, Cliff likes to push that ball up the floor, and it's one of the ways that you can compensate for not having that power center on the inside. Chance is just a 53% free throw shooter, and he hits just about as average as he splits the free throws. Georgia Tech after the early lead. Good pressure, and McCants almost with the steal as they ran the trap on Dalrymple right in front of us. That was a very good half-court trap by Clemson and not very well uh, adjusted by Georgia Tech. The Clemson people say that Ellis will use a lot of different defenses with his club. May even see a box and one tonight against Mark Price. You're seeing it right now. Box and one with Hamilton on Price. Wanting to give Georgia Tech and Bobby Crimmins a lot of things to think about early in the first half. Wayne Farrell on the baseline. We well, really have to like that young player and the fact that he uh, aggressively went for that shot. 
Vince Hamilton coming off a 29-point effort against Appalachian State, directs the attack for Clemson. They're going to work it inside to Horace Grant. Rebound, Joseph had it and was fouled from behind. The foul is going to go against Glenn Corbett. Corbett reaching over, kind of a foolish foul right here. You can see McCants is putting it up in a hurry. Corbett's out of this play right now. There's no sense going ahead and reaching in. Obviously no shot. Let's see if they stay in the box and want to go back to the straight man. Mark Price, man-to-man -man defense. Laying off Burrell a little bit. Good dish off by Price. High off the glass, too strong by Joseph. Here comes Clemson. That's some cross-court pass by Hamilton. Hamilton will direct the attack. You will also see Marshall Grayson come in, into the ball game as Mr. Hamilton hits his first free throw. I knew I was going to do that at least once. It's Grayson Marshall. I knew I was going to do that at least once today. Vince Hamilton has one of the highest arcing shots in the country. Very unusual technique, but it goes. Inside, Farrell with the miss. Hamilton quickly the other way for the Tigers. He pulls and fires over Price. Oh, good, and shot. the foul to go with it. Same style. It's a very quick shot. He gets it off going on the way up and puts that high arc on you. Never see it blocked. And, and it's so unusual that if you're playing him, you don't expect him to release the shot quite so quickly. He's so slender, Billy, you lose sight of the fact that he's got some good physical strength. Uh, he is a solid 6'4". Solid 6'4", a great leaper. Rutherfordton, North Carolina, which is out in the western part of the state, not too far from Clemson. People don't realize that. I took a trip there this uh, fall, and you don't realize how close Clemson is to the Asheville area. There's that half-court zone trap again. Good overall team size by Clemson. Joseph on the baseline for the Yellow Jackets, banks it off the glass. We are tied at six. Here comes the Tigers again. Boy, don't take a breath if you're on defense. Quickly the other way. Del Rimple to Price couldn't handle it. The turnover will go against the Jackets and give the ball back to Clemson. This is a very hard floor here, and the ball comes off uh, with an awful lot of fire on it. You'll see this bounce pass. Now on a, a normal floor, that had been a little bit softer, and it came up so hard. Back to the action in the corner. Down on the baseline. That's McCants. Nice soft seven-footer. It's a different type of Clemson ball club than people who saw the Clemson play last year. They've got a lot of fire. They're not afraid to put it up. They've got a lot of confidence. Price works it inside, feeds it off to Sally. He has the score at eight apiece. There's Mark's Price experience. He knows how to handle that, that zone trap. Hamilton works around the perimeter. Away from the ball, a whistle, and we're going to get an offensive foul against Vince Hamilton. There's Hamilton trying to set a screen away from the ball and got caught. Cliff Ellis without that uh, coat on. Here we see Mark Price going right through the trap. Excellent ball handling and then makes the dish right inside to Sally for an easy shot. Third team foul on Clemson. First on Hamilton. There's the pressure outside. Georgia Tech able to handle it. Dal Ripple. Good ball work it back Dalrymple. outside. Now the Tigers have backed in and allowed Wayne Farrell to move it inside the lane to get his second field goal. Really a top ball player. Came into the league, heralded as one of the outstanding freshman recruits in the nation and has proven to be that type of player. Horace Grant double teamed on the baseline, but Clemson was able to maintain possession. B. And we get a traveling violation. So far, Clemson's been able to get that ball inside very well. Good bounce passes and good position inside. We have got timeout on the floor here with 15-56 remaining in the first half to score. Georgia Tech 10, Clemson 8. We'll be right back. I just got a sporty truck priced like some base trucks, the Mazda V2000 SE5. Look, it comes standard with a five-speed, radials and spoker wheels, sporty stripes, step bumper, and dual sport mirrors. Pretty sporty for just $59.95. Takes a Mazda SE5. 
Okay, Dinah, I know you want to get to the ACC game, so we'll make this a quick commercial for Holly Farms' new Time Trimmer Chicken. No problem. Already did it. Already? Oh, sure. I got the new Time Trimmer boneless thighs. That was 20 minutes. And the breasts were 15 minutes. And the golden fried chicken nuggets, that was exactly 10 minutes. Nothing to it. Gee, that's fast, Dinah. Yeah, well, that's why they call them Time Trimmers. Hey, I really got to Dinah, Dinah. I... Oh, I know. America is cooking with Holly Farms' Time Trimmer Chicken fast. Dinah, you change so fast. When I say fast, I mean fast. <laughs> Isn't it time for the great taste of roast beef? Not here it isn't. You can go here for something, but you'll go hungry. Where can you find great tasting roast beef? It's here. It's Hardy's new roast beef sandwich that's juicier than ever. It's all here at Hardy's. With your choice of tangy barbecue or horseradish sauce on a toasted bun. So if you have to ask, where do you get the roast beef? It's here. It's all here at Hardy's. Announcers for this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception to this telecast without the written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Atlanta, 10 to 8 in favor of Georgia Tech. Wayne Farrell inside is rejected, but fouled by Horace Grant. Grant on the foul, a real nice block by McCants, though one man away. See the feet going inside, and Farrell is a Farrell rather is a guy who is really aggressively going to score tonight. Gets fouled on that one. Really like the build on him. As I said, he was one of the leading recruits in the entire United States last year in Townsend, Maryland. Had a reputation at Calvert Hall uh, ever since his sophomore year. Splits the free throws to give him five points on the night and a three-point Georgia Tech lead, the biggest here in the early going for either club. The pull-up jumper from the wing is misfired by Chris Michael, and Price comes away with the ball for Georgia Tech. Sally Slip. The fans here don't like it. They thought that John was maintaining possession. Let's take a look at it. Mark Price again pushing the ball up the floor right there. John Sally Tripp got rid of the ball. I didn't think he was walking. I thought he got rid of the ball before he uh, actually traveled. Georgia Michaels, Tech, excuse excuse me, me, Michaels had two shots from the side, which is the shot he likes on that jumper and hadn't hit it. Hamilton forced that one a little bit. Farrell comes away with a rebound, but then throws away the outlet pass. Uh, Bobby Crimmins up and cheering in a way, and the fact that he wants to push this ball against uh, Clemson also, but Farrell made a tough outlet pass right there. Cross court, didn't have a good angle. Cliff Ellis out shouting instruction to his club. McCann's at the top of the circle. Matched up against John Sally as the Yellow Jackets go to the man-to-man. -man. Both of these teams really match up athletically very well against each other. With the exception of the Price-Hamilton uh, difference in height. Good screen that time. A good pick by Horace Grant. Enabled Mr. McCann's to get his second field goal. Five points in the ball game for Glenn. And it is a one-point lead for Georgia Tech. There's that 1-3-1 one, one trap again. Half court. A lot of size out there. What a pass inside by Dalrymple, and Farrell missed the slam. The price miss is corralled by McCants. The Tigers quickly into the front court. You're talking about run, shoot. These guys will go after it. Hamilton. Oh, again. Vince has incredible range with that jump shot, too. As I said, he shoots on the way up, so he has an awful lot of power. And he is not bashful, particularly in light of the fact that his numbers have been increasing as the season has progressed. Ball is kicked. Bill, I want to ask you, you think it's a, a psychological thing that he now finally feels totally healthy? He's been battling the injuries throughout his career. That could have a lot to do with it. He's uh, had injuries in both the leg and in the wrist and uh, was outstanding before those injuries, even played well while he had those injuries. So it certainly has to help him a lot. I've always liked him as one of the top players going. Good anticipation on the defensive end by Corbett to come up with a steal. And Morris Grant converts at the other end of the floor. Georgia Tech now is down by three as Clemson's out to their biggest advantage. And in a dogfight. Clemson has never, uh, a coach from Clemson has never won his opening ACC game. This team's here to play. Offensive foul called against Yvonne Joseph as Corbett established good position down in the low block. Substitutions coming in for Georgia Tech. Scott Petway into the ball game. 6'6 senior. 
Also joining the action, seven-foot freshman Antoine Ford. Ford is coming on a, a lot better than Bobby Crimmins would have imagined. When it gains a little bit of weight, he's going to be almost like a, a similar to John Sally in style of play. Dalrymple with a steal. Michael took it back. They go inside to Grant for the easy lay-in. Clemson by five with 13.05 to go here in the first half. And they're staying in the one 3 one trap as long as it's successful. Now Ripple dribbles through the pressure all the way to the hole. That really shouldn't happen, but Dal Ripple very much like Farrell is a very gifted athlete at his size. Top of the circle, Chris Michael. Grant works over Joseph. Thought he got whacked, no call. The rebound to Petway. Price quickly pushing it ahead. And Dalrymple is listed at 6'4", but when he gets inside, he plays like he's about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Good patience that time, Billy, because he had trouble controlling the pass. Nice the move play. is McCants, and he is stripped of the ball by Antoine Ford. Here comes Dalrymple. Price hasn't hit anything from the outside yet. Hamilton has uh, been sticking right with him. Now Clemson goes back to the straight man-to-man. -man. They're wiping up the floor on the other end of the court. And that's why they stopped the clock. And that will enable Clemson to bring in Grayson Marshall, their super freshman out of the Washington, D.C. area. He's another great prospect. Well, he really is. He came in rather unheralded in terms of his high school stats are not uh, I. I shattering in regard to the fact that he only had about 16 points a game, but he knows how to play the game. He actually, behind Hamilton, is the number two guy in regard to minutes played, so Cliff Ellis has a lot of confidence in him. John Sally has returned to the lineup for Georgia Tech. Yvonne Joseph getting the breather. Out of two-three zone by Clemson. Del Ripple trying to work it into Sally, and somehow he just lost the ball on the dribble. It's a hot floor here. The ball really bounces. We have got a timeout here at Georgia Tech with 11.51 remaining. The score, Clemson 16, Georgia Tech 15. We'll be right back. The Atlantic Coast Conference has become known as the Conference of Champions throughout the United States. Champions because the coaches and players in the ACC have set a standard of excellence in collegiate standard of excellence in the supermarket business with our quality products, with our 6,800 low prices, and with the people who serve you. Why not visit one of the hundreds of Food Line stores soon and meet some of our champions? The essence of hitting. George Brent. Some guys say it's the rhythm, reading the pitch. For me, it's a film that says I'm going downtown. The essence of shaving. This is Atra by Gillette. It pivots so the twin blades stay on your beard longer. But what Atra is all about is the feeling that says you just got Gillette's best shave. Gillette, the essence of shaving. ACC basketball continues tomorrow night with another great matchup. The Maryland Terrapins down in Chapel Hill to take down the North Carolina Tar Heels who have very quietly moved themselves back into the top ten. Well, North Carolina had a schedule which put them almost on a worldwide tour there. I'm anxious to see him play. I've watched a little bit of uh, film clips on the Dean Smith show, and it uh, looks like he's got everybody doing the things that he wants. And right now, he even says that they're going to challenge for the championship. So, enough said. Grayson Marshall goes all the way to the hole, but can't get it to drop. Georgia Tech with a chance to regain the lead. Price loses it on the baseline. The ball is coming up so hot off the floor that Mark Price can't seem to get a handle. That's about the third or fourth time tonight. I said the floor is hot, and that ball is really coming back up in their hands. That is the seventh turnover for Georgia Tech. Clemson has converted three hoops off the turnovers. They can make it eight points if they get a basket on this possession. There's a good double team by Petway. Great play. But he makes a, I should say Ford made the bad pass. A little sloppy action. Great rejection by John Sally on Glenn McCants on the baseline. It's some kind of block by Sally, because McCants about six, eight, or nine. Sally shows you that he's almost six or eight inches above him when he makes that block. 
It's amazing that a young man would grow three inches like that in his collegiate years. Oh, boy, there it is, Horace Grant on the alley-oop. And again, there's a case of Marshall, the freshman, having the feel and the timing for that play as Grant came right behind the zone. Grant slipped away from another freshman, Antoine Ford, from Georgia Tech. They go down low to Sally, and he is triple team, but worked himself inside for a good power move. And there's a guy that, as you mentioned, threw three inches, but in effect increased his quickness. Terrific move on the baseline. Chris Michael looking inside for Hamilton. It went off his face, and it finally comes free to Bruce Dalrymple. Petway on the move. Rebound comes down to little Grayson Marshall. Michael goes inside to Grant, put it up no, but we've got a foul on Antoine Ford. What's so tough if you're playing against a team that's playing this style of Clemson, you have got to get back on defense. So the transition game is extremely important, and you better be in pretty good shape, which obviously the Clemson players are. Substitutions for Georgia Tech. Yvonne Joseph comes back in, and Dwayne Farrell returns. So the original starting lineup back on the floor for Bobby Crimmins. Georgia Tech's had to play without uh, Craig Neal, their fine backcourt players, out with the arm injury. Here's another thing I think will be fun to watch tonight if you had a stopwatch on this particular game. You have a 45-second clock. I'll be surprised if either one of these teams used more than 10 seconds to get a shot off. Horace Grant with six points in the ball game, and he misses both free throws. He's only a 54% free throw shooter. A little mechanical move that time by Joseph. Price Off on that. the roll, and got it to go. Mark Price used his body here to get this shot off. First basket of the night for the little guy. Now that should have been an offensive foul, not a foul on the defense. Mark Price went right on over into the defense. He's uh, very adept at doing that, but it is not a play that should be legal. In my estimation, the referee had that one completely backwards. One Grant goes out, and another Grant comes in. Harvey Grant, the freshman, replaces brother Horace in the Clemson lineup as Mark Price completes the three-point play. And Georgia Tech back on top, 20 to 18. Mark shooting 75% on the year from the foul line, and he's about an 85% free throw shooter when he gets his concentration down. Chris Michael, too strong. Rebound, Farrell way into the air. That's three misses for Michael from the spots that he likes to shoot. Georgia Tech owning the boards here early. Joseph's shot won't fall, but the rebound comes loose to Farrell. Rejected by McCants, but Joseph on the foul. Nice offensive rebounding, and look at Clemson coming again. We're going to get a blocking foul going the other way. Vince Hamilton was off to the races. Yvonne Joseph tried to get there, but right. too little too late. It's some kind of pass and cross court. Good hustle by Yvonne Joseph, because he had to go to full 90 feet to get there in position. Showed you what great speed that he has for a man his size. Vince Hamilton will get a couple of free throws. Leading scorer on the night thus far with seven points. You see the shooting percentages. Vince Hamilton was one of the leading free throw shooters in the nation before he had his last injury, shooting right under 80% now, and as the year goes on, the more he gets to the foul line, you see him get up around 85%. He was the MVP of the Ipte tournament. Just doesn't have many weaknesses. Yeah, I, I believe he's been all tournament in about nine tournaments throughout his career since he's been at Clemson, so a money player is Ben Hamilton. Georgia Tech's lead is a basket. Farrell. Can't get it to drop, and Harvey Grant comes away with the ball. Here comes the Tigers on the fast break. A good hustle defensively by Dwayne Farrell. You know what's interesting is to watch teams that play against the Clemson now. They realize they're in a horse race, because Clemson's going to fire that ball length of the court. That time Farrell got back just in time, but uh, the Georgia Tech players are really in retreat in a hurry. And little Marshall likes to get that ball up over the top as well. Tough shot. Rejected, but the follow is also rejected. John, Sally again on McCants. Glenn McCants thought he had an easy two. Ball loose on the floor, but Dalrymple controls. You gotta like.
likes to hustle on the part of both of these teams. And although I didn't see the Wake Forest Georgia Tech game, if they out hustled Georgia Tech the way they're playing tonight, Wake Forest must have been on all burners. Price inside leaves it short, got away with going over the top of Marshall. The rebound went out of bounds, and they say it belongs to Georgia Tech. 8.47 remaining here in the first half. 22 to 20. The Yellow Jackets on top of the Tigers. They get back in the zone on the out-of-bounds situation. Yeah, they're really confused now. They've got some playing man-to-man. -man. Maybe they're in a little dime, and they are. It's going to be Marshall going to be playing against Price. The others are in the zone. They've used a number of defenses already to try and combat Mark Price, and it's been fairly effective. Dal Ripple misfires, and McCants with a rebound. He's been a, an impressive player up in last year in the first half for Clemson. Price pounding Marshall, but he maintains the dribble. And wisely gets it to Vince Hamilton. No place to go. And they're going to call the block on Yvonne Joseph as Glenn Corbett drove the baseline. Corbett got a break on that one. He really was headed into no man's land. This Joseph doesn't get there in time. Good call by the official. And that's the third foul on Yvonne Joseph. So we'll probably see more of Ford. Yvonne Joseph will sit down with the three personals. He has four points. He has had some foul difficulties. It's only his fourth year of organized basketball, in a sense. But he just didn't get there in time. And it really saved Corbett because he was going into no man's land. Antoine Ford and Scott Petway come back into the lineup. The alley-oop try, and nobody went up for it. And that was kind of tough to throw that one from that far away. The Marshall got by with it the last time down the floor that he tried it in the out-of-bounds situation, but has a very difficult pass. Interesting that we have seen Scott Petway on two occasions here in the first half, Billy. Do you think uh, Bobby Crimmins is concerned about a, a size factor out there with Del Rimple? Well, yeah, maybe he'd like to have uh, a little bit more experience on the court right now. Petway understands the game, very knowledgeable player. Season veteran in a conference game, you want those kind of fellows on the floor. You saw the graphic a few moments ago about the turnovers. You would expect it in a high-paced game like this. Sally misses, and Ford on the follow. Ford and Sally play mighty tall. They're listed seven feet, but they keep their hands above their head very well. So they play even bigger than that. McCants did not want to try and go over John Sally again. Harvey Grant double clutches and gets it to go. Has he improved from last year, or has he improved? He was a floundering freshman last year. He's a pretty good-looking sophomore right now. Wayne Farrell goes up top to Ford. A couple of freshmen. Petway open on the wing. Quickly the other way, Glenn Corbett is going to be called for an offensive foul. As they say, Antoine Ford established position as we watch the replay again. Now Ford just doing a great job getting back down court. Now just the opposite of the play that we saw go against Joseph. Ford was in position through the charge. A hectic first half that has 6.50 remaining. The score, Georgia Tech 26, Clemson 22. Oh, it's winter. And cold season is here for cold discomforts, like a runny nose, aching sinuses, and those watery, watery eyes. Now, what should you take for fast, fast, fast relief of all those cold discomforts? One of these. A Piedmont flight to Florida. And remember, take only as directed by your travel agent. Why is it that in every neighborhood, while dozens of places may come and go, some seem to stay on forever? Because no matter how times change, they do what they do better than anybody else, and their customers keep coming back for more. At NCNB, we know that what works for other businesses works for banking. So if we're going to be the best bank in North Carolina, we have to work at it. One neighborhood at a time. 6.50 remaining here in the first half as Georgia Tech and Clemson with Georgia Tech on top by four as Jack Corgan and Billy Packer are here to bring you 
what has been a hectic first half of action. Yeah, both teams moving up the court very well. Uh, I'm really impressed in regard to the conditioning of both of these squads because the pace is really strong. If you don't get yourself back on defense, you're going to be some easy layups, but neither team has given that away so far. So, you know, one of these clubs have got to tire down a little bit. Georgia Tech's been going to the bench a little bit more than the Clemson, and I would expect it's got to help them as this game wears on. Remember, stay tuned at the end of the game. We'll be picking a Holly Farms player of the game from each school. The long lob inside for Farrell was picked off by Horace Grant. Chris Michael the other way gets it to drop with the shooter's touch. And that's the shot that you want to see Michael hit. If you're sitting over in that Clemson bench, he missed three in a row, and that's the spot he wants to shoot from. Good double teams again in that 1-3-1 trap. Now Clemson goes back to a 2-3 zone. Turnovers have plagued Georgia Tech somewhat here in the first half, although they remain on top. That is the 10th turnover unofficially here in the first half. And Clemson has converted it into eight first half points already. That's two on Petway in a row, and he'll probably be sitting down here real quickly. Corbett directs some traffic outside. Corbett showing good patience. He hadn't been scoring much. Yeah, Hamilton has been. Vince Hamilton with 11 to lead all scores. We are deadlocked at 26. And another turnover. You know, that ball is coming up off that floor. The guys are just turning it over by, on the catch off the dribble, which is very unusual. Morris Grant, too strong. Rebound is swatted out of bounds off of Georgia Tech. Raymond Jones got away with a push that time on the inside. The first time we're seeing Jones. Shot goes up. There's the push underneath. Raymond can't quite control the ball. They say it went off of Scott Petway. Reset on the shot clock and an inbound play for Clemson. I look for Corbett to go ahead and start getting in the offensive flow. Hamilton again. Rebound Jones. Yes. Good catch. That's a good, strong rebound. One-handed. The interesting thing, Billy, talking about the turnovers and the problem with the dribbles, it's the home club having the trouble. You think that would be a problem for Clemson? Well, you wouldn't think that uh, it would be a problem for anybody, but the ball just seems to be so hot. I mean, when you see a Mark Price lose control of a dribble, that's very surprising. Is he just a floor? Do we have an overinflated ball? I don't know. You know, that's an interesting question. Maybe we just have an overinflated game in regard to the heat and the emotion involved. Ford pressured on the baseline, but the ball will still belong to Georgia Tech. Dwayne Farrell sits down, and Scott Petway is back in quickly. Georgia Tech is forced to go without Yvonne Joseph. As you look at Scott Petway, for the rest of this first half, Joseph with three personal fouls. In a man-to-man -man situation, Price is having a hard time getting that shot off against Hamilton. Just three points here in the first half. Ford on the follow try, no, and they're going to call Ford for the foul. Even though Ford misses this, he really impresses me with his power going to the boards. He was right up there around the rim, actually grabbed it a little bit and had to tear away rim, so pulled it down. Didn't look like he was grasping it, but he uh, probably was. Seven, no call. Seven foot, 200 pound freshman from the Bronx. In New York City, as you take a look at Chris Michael, who will be at the foul line. No, I didn't think that was right, and now we're going to get Horace Grant. <laughs> Michael's an 80% free throw shooter. Grant, 54%. Grant has already missed his first free throw attempts. He's now 0 for 3, and a big rebound by Dalrymple. Price for long range, no. Oh, rebound, oh, boy. Horace Grant and Ford hit the deck. That was a great rebound. Hamilton behind the back to Corbett. Rebound comes down to Ford. Here comes Price for Georgia Tech. Dalrymple blocked from behind by Raymond Jones, but they've got Corbett for the foul. I think they're gonna call Corbett for the foul and uh, he can't believe it. Here Price goes up for the shot. This is some great rebounding here. Three fellas in a pack. Grant gets the ball, comes out of there with it. Excellent play by Grant. The foul the on Corbett is his third. Excuse me, Billy. Now Corbett is underneath the basket here. 
I didn't really see the foul. Third personal on Corbett, so he'll have to sit down. Grayson Marshall back in the ball game. Bruce Dell Ripple with his fifth point of the first half. 71% free throw shooter. Well, despite the fact that Corbett's uh, second leading scorer on the team, he really hadn't gotten into the offensive flow, so it really doesn't hurt Clemson that much to bring Marshall back in there. Chris Michael off the long outlet. Rebound, Raymond Jones. Yes. And the foul to go with it. Raymond Jones looks like he wants to play tonight. Two great rebounds on the inside. That's some follow-up. You see the play now. See if he doesn't use his left arm here to gain, gain an opening. See, he pushed away Sally's arm with his left hand. Should have been an offensive foul. You'll see it again. Now watch him push away Sally's arm right there as he pushed it away to go ahead and get the shot off. Three-point play for Raymond Jones. Five points in the ball game. Clemson and Georgia Tech not at, at 31. What I, like him, change, excuse me, what I like about this half-court trap, Jack, is the fact that Clemson plays a big man out on the point, which makes it very difficult to rotate the ball. Now with a reverse layup, no, but the foul. I looked up at the scoreboard, they had a 31 all, and I thought that couldn't be right, and they've changed it back to 31-28 as we... Uh, that was Vincent Hamilton, there's Wake Forest on a roll again. That was Hamilton's foul there on Dalrymple, who made another great baseline drive. Second personal on Vince Hamilton. Bruce Dalrymple goes back to the line where a moment ago he had a pair of free throws. A 71% free throw shooter. Neither one of these clubs shooting very well from the free throw line. Georgia Tech at 65 and Clemson at 61%, and that's not good at all. Did a game with NC State the other day. They're down in the low 60s, which I really have no explanation for. They're better teams than that. Two-point advantage for Clemson with 355 to go here in the first half. Marshall from long range. Shows he can put it up. First, good ball handling by Clemson. Nice crisp passing. First points for the freshman. Petway double team, and he throws it away. Marshall against Sally. Oh, great play. A little herky-jerky move there. Sally was going for the block. Great play by Marshall. A six-point Clemson lead, the biggest for either team here in the first half. It's hard to imagine, but they have won 18 of the last 20 games, they being Clemson. And these two teams have played. You wouldn't think that would be the case. This Clemson club is going to be tough to beat in the Valley, I'll tell you that. It may be tough to beat here tonight. Georgia Tech has been very dominant here at home since Bobby Crimmins came on the scene, but they are struggling tonight. Price misses again. Dalrymple is rejected by Raymond Jones. Hamilton all alone. Yes. Well, I like Marshall. He was able to slow that down, hit the open man. Really a good-looking freshman guard. Here we're going to see Petway caught in a trap. Good steal by Raymond Jones. Marshall wants it, class. He goes in there, he realizes Sally's coming, so he protects the ball. He showed us he's a left-hander, protected with a right hand. Good play. 2.48 remaining in the first half. Clemson 37, Georgia Tech 29. Back after this word from Natural Light. To make chili as good as my mom's, you need Italian tomatoes, Mexican beans, and my ma in the kitchen. How's it going, ma? How's your kitchen? <laughs> She's great. Knows just how hot I like it, and it's all cold when I like with it. Natural light. The beer with the taste for food. Ah, this is the life. Get off the table. <laughs> Yeah, all natural, less filling. It's natural light from Anheuser-Busch. Put a coaster under the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the financial supermarket. Squeeze these software stocks. They're solid. Your future lies in pork bellies. In this world of confusing financial options, you don't have a chance if you don't have a plan. <laughs> And that's where a Jefferson Standard agent can help with insurance and other financial services, plus the knowledge to put together a plan that makes sense. Financial services from Jefferson Standard. Our business is your future. Coming up at halftime, we have got one for the books, that great triple overtime game last year here in Atlanta, Georgia Tech and Virginia. We'll also have a profile from Clemson on some Fulbright scholarship winners from the school, and Billy will have a special guest. 
All that coming up at halftime. 2.48 remaining. Clemson by eight. The biggest lead of the ball game. They lead Georgia Tech 37 to 29. It has been the bench that has really aided the Clemson Tigers. You're right about that, Jack. Clemson with 13 points off the bench. Georgia Tech with just four. They've had one common opponent. That's Tennessee Tech. And in that particular, there we see that bench scoring. And in that particular case, uh, Georgia Tech won by 18. Clemson lost by one. But this Clemson team's a lot better ball club than what opened up the season. Georgia Tech seems real tentative now, Billy, on offense. They're not really sure what they need to be doing. That young fellow, that's one way to do it. He's a solid looking player. Wayne Farrell was seven. Baseline, Raymond Jones, no rebound, volleyball to John Sally. Both teams looking to push that ball up the floor. Farrell is hammered as he went to the hole. It didn't seem to bother him. He is all business. Goes right on in there. Raymond Jones pops him. He goes right to the foul line. Don't worry about it. Calvert Hall, where Dwayne is from in the Towson, Maryland area, Billy, has been one of the very fine nationally ranked high school teams the past several years. That's right. The whole Baltimore, Washington area has had so many top-rated teams. You've got Dunbar out of Maryland and out of D.C. and DeMatha, Calvert Hall. They're all uh, on up there among the very best in the country. Dwayne Farrell with eight points now. He has paced the attack for Georgia Tech. Mark Price with just three points here in the first half. And Mark really hasn't found the range with that jump shot. Chris Michael took the extra step off the catch. That's very difficult to make the change of direction off the catch. There are only a few players in the country that can do it. One of the best that I've ever seen is Michael Jordan. And Michael used to get caught early in his career with a walk because he just was so quick with that step. Two weeks ago, Billy saw Michael score 45. He is playing unbelievably well. Farrell again. Well, he tried to ram that through from 12 feet. Hamilton pushing it ahead. That's almost like a two-handed jumper. Yep. And again, see, he shoots that shot going up. He has so much power. Price was right in his face, and he still got it off. Now, Hamilton was a good high jumper in high school. Vince Hamilton on the way to 15 first half points has also picked up three rebounds as we have John Sally hit the deck, but he kept the ball alive. But away Easy comes basket. Clemson. Horace Grant for the slam. Grant with eight. Georgia Tech trails by eight. Good job again by Marshall. He realizes nobody's back to help get the ball in bounds, so he goes down there and caused a little defensive trouble. Started to say Vince Hamilton has now become the 12th ACC player. To come up with 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 250 assists in his career. That's a pretty good career, and considering how much he's been injured, he'll be an outstanding professional player. The game is really built for him. He can run, jump, shoot. He's so versatile in every phase of the game. Personal foul is the fourth of the night on Glenn Corbett. Now that came no, I think He's not on the floor. That's right. No, it's on Michael. And uh, he just reached in and uh, grabbed Ford. To, and it was a pretty good foul for the simple reason Ford had an easy layup. I mean, sometimes you make a good smart foul. And you see Ford has an easy layup here. You've got to stop him from getting that shot off, which is exactly what Michael did. And although you don't want to be charged with a foul, that's a good time to get one. It is just the first personal on Michael. Chris with number three, Glenn Corbett with 33, and John Culver, the PA announcer, with some help from his friends at the scores table had things confused. And there's a situation where you've got Ford on the line, 57% free throw shooter. He's already missed one, so Michael did his job. Three points for Antoine Ford. down to the final 45 seconds of the first half. Be good to hold for the last shot if you're Clemson. They can use all but eight seconds of this remaining time. Be smart to hang on. Let it work right down to the end as far as they can go. On the baseline, Horace Grant is fouled by John Sally. The Sally or Ford 
There again, Grant doing a fine job taking the ball to the basket. I just thought with a with a nice seven-point lead going on the inside, up for the block. The block goes forward. It is uh, Ford's foul. Antoine Ford rather than John Sally with the foul. That is his third personal. So there have been some problems in the pivot in the personals department. And coming into the ball game for Georgia Tech is Jack Mansell, a 6'8 junior out of Sharon, Pennsylvania. Now, good move by Bobby Crimmins. Doesn't want to pick up another cheap foul on any of his big people because he has Joseph in some foul trouble also. Horace Grant with nine points here in the first half. Gets the roll for 10. 30 seconds to go. The clock not a factor. See if Georgia Tech goes for one. Down nine. Got a guard against the turnover and let Clemson get into double figures to go into the locker room. Mansell with a good head fake. Be surprised if he takes the shot. Sally inside. No follow. Yes by, I think, Dwayne Farrell. Three seconds. Marshall will fire. And that'll do it. Boy, into end action here in the first half at Alexander Memorial Coliseum as Clemson surprisingly out to a seven-point advantage over Georgia Tech, 43 to 36 here at halftime. And Billy, quickly, it has been a very, very fast-paced first half. It really has. I'm very impressed with the way Clemson changes their defense, the way they move the ball up the court. They're a team that will have to be reckoned with. They came into a tough place to play, but they're ready to play. I think one of the things that will be of concern concern for Bobby Crimmins at halftime. How do you get Mark Price into the offense? He's had a difficult time. He's had Vincent Hamilton on him when they're in the man-to-man. -man. But they, uh, being Clemson, are in the man-to-man. -man. He can't shoot over Hamilton very well. And he's had to handle the ball against that 1-3-1, one, one, so he gives it up. And the other men will have to do the scoring from the wings. The other side of the ledger, how do you stop Vince Hamilton? Well, I think he's a great basketball player. Everybody in this league has known that for quite some time, and I think you made a good point, Jack. When he's healthy, which is the first time we're really seeing that in a couple of years now, he can play with anyone. So Clemson has been in great shape. Georgia Tech struggling here a little bit. Cliff Ellis uh, maybe is going to get over the jinx of a Clemson debut in the league to come up with a victory. Well, another half to play. Tough place to win a game in here, so we just have to wait and see. But I think all fans of the ACC have to be impressed with this first-year coach in the league. He's going to put a very good quality product on the floor. So we've got lots of halftime activities for you. It'll be one for the books, a great Georgia Tech-Virginia triple overtime game from a year ago, a profile on some Fulbright scholarship students from Clemson, and Billy will have a special guest. All of that coming up here at halftime. The score, the Clemson Tigers 43, Georgia Tech 36. Back with more right after this. Isn't it time you experience the outstanding total performance of the Mazda RX-7? Because only then can you feel the seemingly unending flow of power from its unique rotary engine and experience exceptional handling from its near-perfect weight distribution. Only then can you appreciate its aerodynamics at work. Only then will you understand why the RX-7 has become a legend in offering superior sports car value. Mazda RX-7. Experience it. Presenting Piedmont's Family Fairs. When you buy a full fare adult ticket, you can take your spouse along for as little as $49 each way. And your children ages 2 through 17 can also go along for just $49. Piedmont's Family Fairs. We've taken a lot off our prices. So you can just take off. Call your travel agent for details. A year ago, this was a very busy place. Then my partner was killed on a business trip. It almost took the life out of this company. Fortunately, our pilot life agent had worked out a partnership insurance plan for us. It gave me the time and resources to keep the store going. Thanks to our pilot life agent, this is still a very busy place. Pilot helps you through life. Who knows how to fix it? Rise and shine breakfast biscuits. The baker in the back at Hardee's. The baker special at Hardee's. Two country sausage biscuits, only $1.29. Our breakfast biscuits have become... The one to try, the only one. From the baker in the back at Hardee's. Homemade from scratch. That's fast. 
Just ask Hardy's Baker in the bag. It's worth getting up for. Get Hardy's Baker Special. Two sausage biscuits, only $1.29. It's all here at Hardy's. This exclusive ACC coverage is brought to you by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproduction. Halftime here at Alexander Memorial Coliseum on the campus of Georgia Tech. Clemson leading Georgia Tech 43 to 36. This place is called the Thriller Dome with some great games like last year's Georgia Tech Virginia game. Triple overtime, one for the books. Tonight, our One for the Book segment takes you back to just under a year ago, here at Alexander Memorial Coliseum. The place they call the Thriller Dome, and Tech fans were thrilled early on when their jackets went out to an eight-point second-half lead behind their young guards, freshman Bruce Dalrymple, to sophomore Mark Price. But Virginia's guards can play, too. Tim Mullen, here on the steal, feeds ahead to Othell Wilson. Then on to Jim Miller for the layup, helping Virginia come back to eventually tie the game. The Cavaliers get the ball for the final shot, but Wilson stumbles and misses. Miller has it blocked by Price, and Kenton Edelin can't connect with the buzzer. So we're on to overtime, tied at 51. Four minutes and 51 seconds later, it's still 51 apiece. But this time, it's Tech's turn for the final shot. Bruce Dalrymple walks the ball into front court, finds Mark Price, but his 20-footer falls short of the buzzer, and we're on to another extra period. A minute 30 left in the second overtime, and Virginia's up by five. But Tech starts a rally on this tip-in by John Sally to cut it to three. On the ensuing inbounds play, Tech presses, and it works. Price layup cuts it to one. Just seconds remaining. Junior Yvonne Joseph hits the free throw, and overtime number three is coming up. This time, Tech gets the tip and makes it count. Bruce Dalrymple with a double-clutch basket, and the Jackets have the lead for good. And when Othell Wilson hits the back iron at the buzzer, Tech has escaped with an incredible triple overtime win, 72 to 71. It's the only triple overtime game in Georgia Tech history, assuring its place as one for the books. I want to thank Rick Walensic for that fine piece, one for the books. What a great game that was one year ago. Great game going here in the first half with Clemson surprisingly on top of Georgia Tech 43 to 36. We'll be back, so stay tuned as halftime continues after this word from your local ACC stations. From WETV News, this is Newsbreak. Good evening, I'm Bob Inman. Coming up after the game on WBTV News, we'll have details from tonight's school board meeting on how 2,000 students are being shifted to new schools in the fall. Then the story on Central Transport Company, ordered by a Mecklenburg judge today to curb its odor problem. And details on basketball star Chris Washburn, ordered to stand trial on theft charges in Raleigh. Now here's Mike McKay in the AccuWeather Center. And it's a very cold night around the Carolinas, as you would well expect, but simply a harbinger of what's to come. We hit 26 this morning. That's forecast again for Charlotte overnight tonight. You join us at 11 for all the weather details. Confused by today's legal system? Watch the People's Court. It's like an introduction to basic law. Weekdays at 4.30 p.m. on WBTV. Ten years ago, Food Line had 30 supermarkets. Next Sunday in Charlotte, we will open our 277th store at the corner of Arrowwood and Nations Ford. The reason Food Line has become America's fastest growing supermarket is because of low prices. And you'll find those low prices plus hundreds of free gifts at the new Food Line in Charlotte. Check the special values in Food Line's big grand opening ad. That's the Food Line grand opening next Sunday at 10 a.m. in Charlotte. you more. Health Kick. More nutrition in every pore. Health Kick. The calcium in milk helps me stay in shape. I'm looking good, baby. Feeling great. Kick. So get on a Health Kick. Let it pour. America's favorite Health Kick. 
Get on a health kick, milk's got more. Have more milk, cause milk's got more. WBTV reaches out to Lancaster. Billy Packer bringing you an exciting first half. Clemson and Georgia Tech with Clemson on top, 43 to 36. And we are now going to take a moment here to profile some of the fine academic programs at Clemson, featuring six Fulbright scholarship winners from Clemson University. And the nominees are Annette House, Morristown, New Jersey, Textile Chemistry. Nancy Snow, Greenville, South Carolina, Political Science. Kathy Heinson, Folly Beach, South Carolina, Zoology. Deborah Savage, Columbia, South Carolina, Chemical Engineering. Russell Caldwell, Crosswicks, New Jersey, History. Catherine Cole, Marietta, Georgia, Foreign Languages. And the winner is... All six of them. These six Clemson University students were chosen for Fulbright scholarships for the fall of 1984. Six of six, a phenomenal achievement. For the next year, they will study in Germany and France and do their part to increase mutual understanding between the people of the United States and the people of other countries. The Clemson Fulbrights. Everybody wins. Clemson University and Young Minds. Working together for you. The Clemson Tigers leading Georgia Tech here at halftime in Atlanta, 43-36. We'll be back with more halftime activities, including Billy Packer with a special guest. All that coming up in a few moments. But first, let's pause for this word from Budweiser. Strength. Pride. Tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdales have been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste, because this Bud's for you. Dinah, let's tell people about the Holly Farms ACC Tournament Sweepstakes. You know, ACC fans can win four tournament tickets, a trip to Atlanta, and luxurious hotel accommodations at the beautiful Ritz-Carlton downtown. Free tickets to see those gorgeous guys? Where do I enter? <laughs> well, all you do is look for entry forms and details at your Holly Farms retailer's display. What do you say to that, Dinah? America is cooking with Holly Farms and the ACC. <laughs> what a team. Introducing Gillette Foamy Gel. The gel that gives you more than any other gel. More lubricants. Better beard setup. More lubricants. Smooth takeoff. More lubricants. For the closeness and comfort you want in a shave, get Gillette Foamy Gel. The gel that gives you more. Nice move, Ruben. Oh, thanks, Mr. Worthy. It's James. Oh, thanks, Jim. It's James. Now that you've made the traveling squad, you better get yourself one of these. Well, I got a bank card. Not like this one. I can get cash in over 3,000 machines. Well, where'd you get it? Back home, but it works coast to coast. Now you can bank coast to coast with the PLUS system from NCNB. Well, gee, how do they do it, Mr. Worthy? <laughs> Beats me. Must be magic. This live coverage is brought to you by Budweiser, by Piedmont Airlines, by Subaru, by Food Lion, by Jefferson Pilot, by Hardy, in North Carolina by NCNB National Bank, in South Carolina by South Carolina National Bank, and in Virginia by Central Fidelity Bank. <laughs> Well, we take a look at that score, 43-36, and for this young man right here, Craig Neal, Craig, you'd rather have that score the other way around. Yeah, I think, you know, it's going to be a tough situation for the team to come back, but the score's, you know, really tough on us because it's our home floor, and it, it should be the other way around. Of course, you won't be playing this year because of uh, the injury to your wrist and arm, but uh, I want to ask you a question right now in regard to this ball game. I say one of your problems is that Mark Price is not being able to get off enough shots and get into the offensive flow. If you're up in that locker room right now, is Bobby Crimmins attacking that problem and how? Yes, sir. I, th I think that's the main concern. You know, I think we have to have Mark Price score 
to be a good ball club, and right now he's not doing that. And uh, we're going to try to get him in more into the game, and uh, they'll probably bring him on the baseline a lot. And uh, hopefully we can get him the ball and get him into the game, and once he's in the game, he makes us go. You're a pretty good basketball fan and a good student of the game, I can tell from talking to you. How about the Clemson team? You played against them last year. They've got some good athletes, and this is a good ball club you're playing. Yeah, they're a really good ball club, and I'm really impressed with how Coach Ellis is handling them, and uh, I think Vincent Hamilton's probably one of the better players in the country, and they're doing a good job. Well, I want to wish you the best of luck in the quick healing process there. We'll look forward to seeing you back in the court next year. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks an awful lot. I'd also like to bring in another fellow with us, a guy that everybody in the Atlanta area knows and around the country, Furman Victor. And Furman, you said his basketball game confusing you a little bit, but I want to ask about something all the fans in the area have to be confused about. You were one of those guys that picked BYU as number one in the nation in Who football. Told you? Well, I understand. You told me, all right? How about that process of picking the uh, national champion in the polls? What do you think about it? Uh, Billy, as far as I'm concerned, they can put the polls away and I'd never miss it. I think the United States would because I've never seen such a furor in my life raised over such a thing which should be fairly trivial as picking a number one football team in the United States. I know you did your homework because you told me you didn't get a chance to see Virginia in a bowl, and, and that's, that's got to be something. You go back a long way. Did you expect to see Virginia finally make it to a bowl game? Never in my life. Uh, I tell you, George Welch has done a heck of a football job in Virginia, uh, but I never expected to see Virginia's football team come up on the same level as a basketball team. No, I had to go to Miami. I had seen BYU, and uh, I was on the Football Writers Association Committee to pick the number number one team, so I felt I should be where the next most likely number one team might come from. You think so someday I, we're going to see the national championship in football? No, never, don't ever. Said. I don't think so, because opinion is what forms the poll. Opinion is still going to be involved in uh, the process of picking who makes the playoffs. So you still have a, you're still going to have an argument. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. I hope this second half is as good as the first one. Jack, back to you. Thank you very much, Billy. At the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting an outstanding player from each team as the Holly Farms player of the game. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed to the institutions under a conference-approved plan in the name of these two players. At the end of the season, each player winning the Player of the Game Award will receive a plaque from Holly Farms recognizing this honor. Here are the Hardy's halftime stats from a first half of action that was fast-paced. You can see some outstanding field goal shooting for the Clemson Tigers, 53% from the floor. Clemson has not allowed a team this year in 10 games to shoot 50% or better from the floor. They did it to Georgia Tech in the first half. As you see, just 42% from the field for Georgia Tech. Also, the turnover ratio, as Tech has had some problems protecting the ball. Looking at the individual scoring, Vincent Hamilton pacing the way for Clemson with 15 points. Horace Grant also into double figures, while the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets have seen most of their points in the first half coming from freshman Dwayne Farrell and sophomore Bruce Dalrymple. But you look down there and see Mark Price with just three first half points. Second half will start right in front of us as Glenn Corbett will inbound the ball to his leader, Vince Hamilton. Clemson on top by seven as the second half gets underway. Into the front court, Hamilton will fire from long range. The rebound goes into the corner to Price. Georgia Tech trying to push it ahead quickly. Sally, no rebound. Comes down to the Tigers, Glenn McCants. The pace remains frantic. It will count. Horace Grant with the shot. Yvonne Joseph with the foul, his fourth. Pass on the inside. Grant showing that he can catch that ball in traffic. Takes it in, lays it up softly off the glass. And what really made the play is when Vince Hamilton threw that cross uh, court pass on over to Corbett to get everything started. And that's something very unusual that Clemson has in their makeup. Most teams like to throw that ball down the same side of the court. Clemson has a tendency to really like to throw it cross court. The only other coach that I know that does that a lot nationally is Billy Tubbs at Oklahoma, and it's very effective. Grant misses the free throw, but Clemson comes away with a rebound. Clemson by nine. Grant makes it 11, and it could be 12. 
Good quick move by Grant. Billy, we saw Clemson a couple of times last year, and this guy who we're going to watch again on the replay, Horace Grant, has made phenomenal progress. He really has. The positive attitude of the Clemson team is uh, is really great to see. I mean, this this takes the league. When you take Wake Forest and put them and Clemson in a position to be able to beat Georgia Tech, the team that I really thought had the best chance to win the league this year, you can see the balance it makes for a great basketball throughout the winter. 12-point lead, the biggest for either team, and Georgia Tech throws it away again. Antoine Ford comes in the lineup, watch the turnover. Had a pretty good idea on the part of Sally, but Price just couldn't get there. And as Craig Neal said at halftime in our interview, Georgia Tech has got to figure a way to get Mark Price into scoring territory. Georgia Tech in the man-to-man. -man. That's McCants against good Sally. Fake. Boy, good pump fake. Glenn McCants was seven, and it's a 14-point lead for Clemson. And this is where Georgia Tech found themselves against Wake Forest. Getting way behind, and now the pressure starts to mount. When you're playing at home and you're the favorite team in this league, you've really got some real problems. Dalrymple knows Sally will follow. Again, uh, Jack, I had to point out that unless Clemson's in incredible physical condition, without many substitutes, and they haven't had many tonight, although they've got good play out of them, this game's going to wear on you a little bit. Shot goes down by Chris Michael. Now they're going to call Glenn Corbett with the basket. First points of the night for Corbett. Price on the move, partially deflected. Price fighting for the rebound. It's still loose. And finally, it is put in by Dwayne Farrell. Boy, what a scramble that was. Well, you can't fault Michael for the effort there. He was on the floor, just couldn't get a handle on the ball. How the fans are getting into this game. They've been pretty much taken away by the Clemson effort thus far. Hamilton over Price, good again. That's three-point range. 17 points for Vince Hamilton. There's that great trap. By Horace Grant as he got there late. The idea was good by Grant, he just didn't get there in time. NC State starting to regain a little bit. They did not play well against St. John's, did not play well against Kentucky, having little problems with the backcourt. 7,011 on hand here, filled to the rafters at Alexander Memorial Coliseum. Dell Ripple on the move on the baseline, no. Farrell, the rebound was hit without a call, but he bangs it home anyway. Thank goodness for Farrell if you're Bobby Crimmins. He's had an excellent game. 15 points on the night for Dwayne Farrell. Hamilton. Putting out a little bit of a dribbling critic, but Mark Price was equal to the task defensively. Listen to that crowd. That was not a good shot by Michael. First time he forced something tonight. Dalrymple tried to force it inside, swatted out of bounds. Very interesting. I noticed that time with Mark Price, but I've seen it a couple times. There are times when he comes down the floor, and he almost is running on his heels, very stiff. Um, but when he's going to fast break, he's up on his toes. I don't know if it's his way of catching his breath or looking at the court differently or what, but I thought it was rather strange. Well, he has some odd sneakers on out there. I've never seen them before. So check that brand name out. Turnaround by Ford, no. Rebound, Vince Hamilton. Corbett chases down the Aaron pass. And banged off the glass by Glenn McCants. Now, one of the things that you say, well, what does a coach do? It's very obvious that the Clemson inside players have worked on fundamental techniques for that turnaround shot on the post. But they do it as well as anybody I've seen. Another Georgia Tech turnover. Michael on the baseline. That's his shot. There's a difference. But Bobby Crimmins has got to go for a timeout, and he is getting worn out. They did not expect Clemson to be at this pace. Clemson has been running Georgia Tech ragged. 58-42, the Tigers on top. We'll be right back. Oh, it's winter, and cold season is here again. And you can find yourself suffering from any number of cold discomforts, like a runny nose, 
aching sinuses and those watery, watery eyes. Now, what should you take for fast, fast, fast relief of all those cold discomforts? One of these. A Piedmont flight to Florida. And remember, take only as directed by your travel agent. Nothing is going to ruin this wedding. So if it takes all night, I personally will drive each of you home in my car. My Subaru. Drive a Subaru with on-demand four-wheel drive. And don't let the weather spoil a good time. There's a saying in sports. You never know how the food line team stacks up against the competition. Compare. Clemson on top of Georgia Tech and Mark Price having his problems. Well, he is. And what's uh, happening to Mark Price now? He only has three points, but even more important than that is the fact that he has not been able to get himself in position to do any shooting. When you've got a good score, you want to get him to the point where he can get off a number of shots. And you notice tonight that he basically has had some long perimeter shots, and that's about the extent of it. They've really uh, taken away any penetration out of Mark. Vince Hamilton has been doing it at both ends of the floor. There's Clemson now, and they've really been shifting their defense as well. They're in a 2-1-2 defense right now. Price taking it inside. Boy, Terrell is the man of the hour. I love that jump shot. 17 points for the freshman. 18 is his career best thus far. He stripped Michael, who got the ball away to Hamilton. Hamilton's jumper is not something you want to teach a new player, but he gets it off well and quickly. At 29 in his last game, he's got 19 in this ball game with 15-15 to play. Dalrymple behind his Sally screen, left it short. The rebound comes loose to Joseph, who's back in with the four personal. Now, Bobby Crimmins has got to go with his horses right now. You can't worry about foul trouble. Particularly if you get behind a game like this, you might as well let your big guy foul out as early as possible. But you may have to go chase uh, Clemson the rest of the way. Outside, Corbett trying to work on Farrell. Pulls up for the banger off the glass. Rebound. Can't snow, but we're going to get a foul. That may be all for Joseph. Now they're going to call it on Dwayne Farrell instead. His first. Bobby Crimmins really working. There's Corbett's jumper going up. Real good rebounding by McCants. He's fighting everybody. Right, it was Farrell that was underneath. McCants and Corbett, Hamilton, Grant. This is an excellent rebounding team. And just no weaknesses out there as far as going to the board. They're all built about the same way, too, Billy. They're tall and slender. I shouldn't say slender. Probably wiry is a better description. They're not afraid to bang. Top team to match up with. McCants into double figures now with a chance to increase the Clemson lead again, and he does. 62-46 Clemson. And when things start going right, even guys that don't shoot free throws well hit a pair. Clemson now goes back to that half-court 1-3-1 one, one trap. Dalrymple, good pass to Sally. It won't count. They're going to call McCants for the shove. Well, that was good one-touch passing. It really was. And again, Mark Price, the guy that, that gave the ball up. Dalrymple saw Sally on the inside. And instead of getting two, though, the ball merely goes out of bounds. Second personal on Glenn McCants. Three on Clemson as a team here in the second half. There is Cliff Ellis working hard. Price from long range. In and out. Not hitting that jumper, and that's a downtown jump shot he's putting up there. I remember when Price was the such a big scorer as a freshman. Georgia Tech set up about 70% of their offense to go ahead and get him that jump shot behind the screen. Tonight he's one for eight. Most of them from long, long range. And Clemson in the zone will let him take it until he can demonstrate that it's falling for him. 
Morrell with a double clutch. No, Del Ripple kept the rebound alive. Clemson almost with the breakaway, but Hamilton couldn't control, control the outlet pass. Billy talking about Mark Price. He shot very, very well in the Rainbow Classic, but going into that tournament, he was shooting at about 40% from the field, so he has had problems from the outside. Well, everybody knows he can shoot. I would say it's shot selection and getting into the flow of the game more than him being off on his jumper. There he's one for nine now. Off the spur of the rim, Sally with a good pass to Pharrell, blocked by McCants out of bounds. The fans wanted a foul here in Atlanta. Well, Jack, you talk about some quick leapers. Clemson's got him on the inside. Pharrell goes up, excellent block by McCants, and then he just smacks that ball out of bounds. That replay graphically showed that there was never any reason to blow the whistle. Sally ran for him. And John Sally won that ball inside. Michael the other way. That took about three seconds. You have got to get back on defense. What teams are going to have to do against Clemson is start cutting that pass off. Just not let him throw the ball down the court so quickly. Good pass inside to Sally. No, but Horace Grant with the foul. Now, Georgia Tech is starting to get the ball down on the low block. They really are going in, down in low, and, and what's going to happen here is that the Bell has probably come back with Raymond Jones, give him a little bit more power on the inside. And here he is, coming right up off the bench now. Excellent move by Cliff Ellis. And you, you need to get a little bit more strength down inside. Grant could be getting a little tired. Real good substitution move there. Raymond Jones returns with five points and a couple of rebounds from the first half as Horace Grant will sit down. Cliff Ellis uh, had some injury problem. He was uh, got hurt while jogging. Remember Bill Foster, when he was injured, uh, Clemson went on a tear, and Ellis hadn't had a defeat that he suffered since that injury. Those coaches that jog, Billy Tubbs again. You remember <laughs> last year, he was hit by an automobile and was in very serious trouble. <laughs> Be like Ray Meyer and sit around, get, get old gracefully. Good hard pressure from Dwayne Farrell, but Corbett was able to control the pass to give and go to Corbett. Nice ball plan. Four points for Glenn Corbett, and Clemson is showing no signs of weakening. The lead remains at 17. They change the defense to a 2-3. Not only put Jones in the game, that one ought to go. There's Price getting into the flow. But Clemson keeps changing their defense around. Here goes that pass again, cross court. It is phenomenal the way they break. Glenn Corbett with six points all in this half, and Georgia Tech again wants to take a timeout. Bobby Crimmins has got to try and come up with some way to slow down this fast-paced Clemson Tiger attack. Take a look again at Mark Price finally getting the hit on the baseline. Well, he got an opportunity to get in the movement and the flow and gets that shot off going to the basket. Stays right with it. I, I don't have any fault in the shot. He just doesn't seem to be in the flow of the game. Clemson, 68. Georgia Tech, 51. We'll be back with more from take this time out. Being a Jefferson Standard agent does have its drawbacks. George, tell me about universal life. Fortunately, there's nothing we like more than helping George. you plan for the future. Would you recommend stocks or mutual funds? With you insurance are... and a wide range of financial services. Hey, George, you got a minute to talk about IRAs? So when you have a question about your future, ask one of our agents about financial services from Jefferson Standard. Hey, George. Our business is your future. Now, that's a beautiful car. Thanks. I just washed it. Well, now you can clean the engine. Let's not get carried away. No, I mean, now Union 76 gasolines have an improved additive that actually helps clean your carburetor better. Oh, you're kidding. The gas does that? Fill it up. Right. So your engine runs cleaner and performs better. Incredible. At last, a weapon against grime in the streets. Crud under the hood. Manifold parasites. <laughs> Let's not get carried away here. Sorry. Fill her up with spirit. Or a cleaner running engine. The spirit of 76. This exclusive ACC coverage is brought to you by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions.
12.43 remaining here in the second half. Clemson on top by 17 over the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And there's Quay Sistar, who is the coordinating producer for our telecast, who is doing double duty as the timeout coordinator tonight. On the baseline, no by Joseph. Sally steals the ball and jams it home. Came right out of Hamilton's hands. He had that rebound. Look at these shooting stats. Clemson's held everybody they played under 50% this year. I really like the hustle on the part of Georgia Tech, too. They're not giving up in this ball game. Price on the move. Good pass to Dalrymple, who got away with a carry. The follow by Farrell, no. The rebound, Raymond Jones. And here they come. Hamilton over Joseph. Vince Hamilton with 21. John Sally just put his head down. He cannot believe it. I mean, you know, this is not the same, Clemson, some of the same players, but this is not the same attack that you saw last year out of Clemson. It really has Georgia Tech frustrated. You know, people are wondering about the conditioning bill in this game. Cliff Ellis ran double sessions in the preseason, so it certainly appears that the Tigers could run all night. It looks that way. He had to get out of bed at 5 o'clock in the morning to practice. There's Farrell again showing that patented jumper. He's going to be an outstanding player in the ACC. That's his career best in a very young career thus far. 19 points now for the freshman from Towson, Maryland. Uh, one of Hamilton's few mistakes tonight. Gave up the ball, and Corbett really wasn't in position to be able to make that catch. Wasn't even looking at it. He almost took yeah. his head off. It's, it's a very tough ball to catch. Did hit him in the yeah, face. Hit him in the face, and he was traveling. It's a big possession for Georgia Tech. First time in a while they've had an opportunity to chip into the lead. Well, a long time to go, and with the clock on the entire game, there's Price coming out from behind the screen. That's two in a row for him. And with that 45-second clock, no lead is safe. And Dal Ripple will be called for the foul. Had a good reach in, but the other hand was hanging out of the hip at the point. Yeah, he has one hand on the body. You can see him reaching in. He sits down real well on defense. Now here he reaches in with the left arm. Excellent call. Second personal on Bruce Dalrymple. Four team files on the Yellow Jackets. The referees are doing a fine job of this game because of the pace of it. They're allowing the players to play and not interfering with the activity. So I think it's a mark of excellent officiating. I was going to say, you don't even think they're out there. They're exactly. out the game closer. Hayden Jones, no follow. Yes. I think Joseph even got a piece of that one. That was a good, quick reach up there by Raymond Jones after the miss. Good point, Jack, because they all are quick off their feet. And again, now they change defense again. 2-1-2 two, two with the cans in the middle. Price from long range is warming up. That one shot and move he made on the baseline got him into the flow of the action. Now at this end of the floor, Billy, what can Georgia Tech do to try and slow down Clemson? <laughs> and give it to Sal. There is the Cliff slam. Ellis call a timeout. And he'll call one right here. Let's watch this slam again. As first the double team. There was the double team and two quick players on Hamilton. A great pass ahead by Dow Ripple. Price realizes Sally's coming and you just don't stop him here. Outstanding basketball. 56 remaining in the ball game. Clemson leading Georgia Tech 72-61. Back after this word from Budweiser. This buzz for the crew restoring America's pride in liberty. This buzz for you. You know America takes pride in what you do. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Want the great taste of roast beef? You won't find it here. Go here for some and you'll go hungry. Where can you find great roast beef? At Hardee's. It's here. Our new roast beef sandwich that's juicier than ever. Now for just $1.99, you can get Hardee's Roast Beef Combo. A juicy roast beef sandwich, regular fries, and a large soft drink. 
So if you have to ask, where do you get the roast beef? It's all here at Hardee's. Coming up tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here on the ACC Network, Maryland and North Carolina at 7 o'clock. You know what's going to be the big controversy in that game? When does President Reagan speak? Before or after uh, the game, uh, Because, right. uh, you know, somebody's going to have to make some tough decisions tomorrow on that one. On Saturday, it'll start at 1 o'clock with the ACC Sports Center with Paul Cameron. Check your local listings for availability. It will be followed by a doubleheader, North Carolina at Virginia, beginning at 1.30. And then this same Clemson team going up against Wake Forest in a 3.30 start. Carolina moving up in those rankings. Tomorrow will be the first field test, and we've, get a, we've had a chance to see them play. Super crowd. The Georgia Tech faithful sorting the troops and they respond. Dale Ripple on the break. Yes. This is dumb comeback. Got it down now inside double figures for the first time in what seems like uh, about 15 minutes of playing time. They've run off eight straight points to cut every lead. Everybody on their feet. That Georgia Tech goes uh, into a zone. I look for Vince Hamilton to try to find a spot against his own. Outside Vince Hamilton. He'll be the guy to take it. And no. hit it. I look for Hamilton has got such guts and confidence in that shot. He just went until he found a hole in his own. Remember to stay tuned at the end of the game. We'll be picking a Holly Farms player of the game for each school. I'd say Vince Hamilton's a pretty strong candidate. So is this guy, Dwayne Farrell. Joseph got away with, no he didn't go. I was going to say he got away with a walk. The whistle was a little late, but it was a good whistle. Yvonne Joseph's a little bit mechanical, and that goes back to the fact he has not been playing a game for a long time. He had the shot, really tried to get a better one. 74-63, the turnovers have been cut down in the second half. But strongly in favor of Clemson's defense. On the baseline, Jones double team and loses the ball. Sally with a great defensive effort. On the baseline, Del Ripple cut off. And wisely, Sally and Price say, let's reset. Dale Rimple from the foul line. All right, Georgia Tech is red hot right now. Now, Cliff Ellis used the timeout to try to stop the flow one time. Hamilton has hit his jumper. And now we'll see if Clemson can go ahead and play under what will be intense pressure the rest of the way. They now have Dale Rimple covering Vince Hamilton to try and get a little better physical matchup. Good move by Bobby Crimmins. Corbett on the move. Hamilton from the corner. Bingo. What's amazing, Bobby Crimmins said after the Wake Forest game, if Kenny Green is left off the ACC team, there's a big mistake. Now, if you say you can't do the, you can't leave Hamilton off either, that means there's an awful lot of guys that are supposed to be All-Americans that don't make the All-ACC team. Playing a great game, both teams. Fun to watch. Georgia Tech a little patient. They know they can't afford to miss fire on their opportunities with 7.05 to go in a game. Price from downtown, that was not a great shot. Farrell with the rebound, and he is fouled by Glenn McCants. That's a good job by Dwayne Farrell. He realized he did not have the shot that he thought he had, so he created a foul. It's a real good move. You can tell he's played a lot of top flight competitions. He didn't have the shot he wanted, so he just threw up a prayer, tried to draw the foul. Good job. Literally with that reverse move, Billy, put it outside of McCants' arm so McCants could do nothing but foul him. That's right. A lot of times you're not going to get off the shot. If you can draw the foul, it's just as good. You get yourself on that line for two. Dwayne Farrell showing why he is one of the top young players in the country. 20 points. He's on... Excuse me, Jack, only shooting 57% for the foul line, and with that stroke he's got, he ought to be a lot higher than that. I'm sure a lot of that is just the transition into the college game. He and responds he, with a pair there. He's going to go to the foul line a lot because he takes the ball to the hoop very well. Grayson Marshall back into the ball game, directing the attack as they move Hamilton to the shooting guard. 
Good defense by Dalrymple. Didn't go for those fakes. You see the clock in the lower portion of your screen. We're under 640, and we're going to get a five-second violation against the Clemson Tigers. Cliff Ellis coolly says, just pass the ball and keep it in the flow. Boy, in a game like this, you wouldn't expect to see a five-second count the way they've been moving up down the court. Another game that will, perhaps, as you look at NC State with the victory over Virginia tonight, lob inside to Sally. This is another reason why they call this place the filler ball. Boy, the Georgia Tech players showing an awful lot of courage in this comeback. The Clemson lead is down to just seven. And a concerned Cliff Ellis watches his offense. Horace Green on the move. Offense. Offensive foul. Yep, that's offense and no basket. And that is four personals on Horace Grant. Now, one of the things that's very obvious, early in the ball game, when Clemson was uh, playing their half-court offense, they were going inside very well. They've gotten away from it. This is the first time they've gone inside in a long time. Here comes Grant in, pushes with the body, shot goes in, but it was uh, put up after the foul took place. Now, Clemson going back to that half-court trap. Bouncing the lane to Sally. Farrell open again. Rebound, volleyball to Vince Hamilton and Dwayne Farrell and his exuberance commits the foul. You know, going back and looking at the film of this game, I'd be anxious to ask Dwayne if he had an indecision point there of whether to bank that shot or put it directly in. And for young players, make up that decision the night before you go to bed. And for the rest of your life, if you're at that 45-degree angle, already have made the determination, am I going to bank it or put it straight in and do the same thing every time? Into the front court, Marshall against pressure. Dangerous passing over there. Marshall really confident of his own ball handling skill. They're going to make Vince Hamilton work for the shots against Bruce Dalrymple. On the move, left-handed. What a one-armed rebound. We're going to jump ball and it'll belong to Clemson. John Sally went up with a one-armed rebound, but Horace Grant grabbed the ball for a tie-up. Corbett went in there a little soft on this shot, put it up left-handed. That kind of shot's supposed to go, and there's Sally showing the strength. Those added pounds are giving him. Outside, Marshall with the new shot clock and let some time run down. 5.15 to go in the game. Now, Georgia Tech playing a little diamond. The Dalrymple thought they were playing the diamond in one. He got out of position, got back in his own in time. Corbett misses twice quickly the other way. Good feed inside the Dalrymple. Super play by Sally. And it's now a five-point ball game. Is Cliff Ellis going to take a time here? I would say this. If this ball club does not score this time down at court, and Georgia Tech does, he'll have to take another one. McCann's got away with a travel, but doesn't get the shot to fall. Hamilton steals from Dalrymple. He's everywhere. 27 points for Vince Hamilton. Uh, he had his high in the game against Appalachian State, but that's 29 the other night, so he's two away from his all-time high. That was a big basket. He hit the big jumper a few minutes ago and then makes that steal, so Hamilton keeping him in the game. Dalrymple from downtown, in and out, rebound. Price kept it alive. Dalrymple inside, no, but he's fouled. It'll go against Glenn McCants. There's the case, even when you're a small backcourt player, you have to learn to block out. There's Dalrymple going in again. He's so strong on the inside, gets that shot off. But what made the play is the fact that Marshall wasn't able to block out Price, and Price kept the ball alive off the boards. Four personals now on Glenn McCann, so Horace Grant and McCann with four apiece for Clemson. Yvonne Joseph with four for Georgia Tech. They've gotten a lot of minutes out of Joseph out there with the four personals. Well, I think that was a very smart move by Bobby Crimmins because, as I said before, if you've got to chase at the end of the game, you just as soon chase with your smaller team. So put Joseph in there early. He commits the fifth. You've got to come in with a smaller man anyway. Dale Ripple was 17. Clemson with a five-point lead. Here's a big possession now for Clemson. McCance against Joseph. Now Ripple giving... Vince Hamilton, a lot more trouble than Price did because of the size. Inside McKean, Sally with the block and the foul. I 
thought Sally was right on the ball with that one, but give McCants a lot of credit. He knew he was taking this one to the basket for the dunk. Here's John Sally going up. And he is right on the ball. That is not a foul. He is right on the ball. That's a tough one. Second personal on John Sally. Well, he is a good player. The play actually started with the penetration by Grayson, Grayson Marshall. Look at that crowd going crazy. Made no difference. That's the way to quiet them down. The Cavs has not been a good free throw shooter. Only shooting 52 percent, as I pointed out earlier. Clemson only shooting 61 percent as a team. He's four for five the line tonight. Great concentration, and he stayed right with his shot. Things are still far from over here in Georgia. Clemson by seven over Georgia Tech. We'll be right back. You guys go home. Money. Fake it to Pinto. Button up with the silver rope and I'll hit you with a bullet. You got it? You got it? Yeah! yeah. Hike! One minute. Watch him! Watch him! Watch him. Where are you going? Three Over minutes. there! The new Subaru Over sedan there. is so much larger and more luxurious. Subaru. You probably won't going? recognize it. Money, come but on. don't let its good looks fool you. Hey. It's still a Subaru. Time was to plan a retirement. All a man had was hard work and whatever wealth he could muster. 10, 7 o'clock start. Then on Saturday, it will start at 1 o'clock with the ACC Sports Center with Paul Cameron. Check your local listings for availability. And then the doubleheader, North Carolina and Virginia, beginning at 1.30, followed by the second half of the doubleheader, Clemson and Wake Forest at 3.30. We have 3 minutes and 52 seconds of... Hilder Skilder basketball remaining here in Atlanta, Georgia, with Clemson holding on to a seven-point lead against the fast-closing Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Last year at this time, the clock would be turned off the last four minutes of the game. This year in the, uh, the trial of the clock, the uh, clock does not go off at any point in the ball game. so 45-second clock on, so there'll be no delay game. Just some good hard-nosed basketball the rest of the way. Do you like that idea? Yeah, I think if you're going to have the clock, you might as well have it all the way. What I don't like is the fact that in the NCAA tournament, there will be no clock. So you play all year in one style, and then you've got to go back to another style for the tournament. Price off the glass, no. Oh! By Bruce Dalrymple. What touch! 19 points for the sophomore from Manhattan. Oh, that's a big turnaround, too, because Clemson was in business there with a working margin of seven points. Inside foul and he is fouled out of the ball game. You talk about a four point turnaround. Dow Rimple's tap in. Right here, it's Clemson's ball all the way. Easy rebound. Dow Rimple touches that ball and it goes in the basket. He's some hustler. Glenn McCants fouls out of the ball game with 3.06 remaining. 13 point night for the junior from Columbia, South Carolina. Coming in to replace him, senior Raymond Jones. Jones back in with seven points. Well, one team gets an opportunity to uh, keep a big man in the game. Yvonne Joseph of Georgia Tech for Clemson. That's the first uh, man out. They still have Horace Grant on the sideline, so they have Grant's brother rather on the on the sidelines, but they got to come back in with another big man. Correll outside as Clemson is backing into a zone, with the exception of Marshall chasing Mark Price. Dal Ripple. Yeah. Dal Ripple has come out and met that ball at the top of the key on four or five occasions and just so positively put it up. A 14-point second half for Bruce Dalrymple, 21 in the ball game, and it's a three-point game. Not only has Dalrymple been doing it on offense, he's doing a great job on Vincent Hamilton on defense. He's just sticking with him like glue. Clemson enjoyed a 17-point lead, but now it's a nail-biter. And with Hamilton being shut out by Dalrymple, Clemson can't find somebody else to put up a shot. That's what's really hurting him. Marshall inside, a good feed to Horace Grant. It's a good penetration. 155 remaining, a five-point Clemson lead. ACC basketball on Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions has been brought to you in part by Mazda. 
now there's a box and one being played on Price. They get on inside to Joseph. He is fouled by Horace Grant, and Grant is fouled out of the game. That time, Marshall took Price man-to-man. -to -man. The other four players playing zone. Clemson has shown about five or six different defenses tonight in this game. The other thing we have to keep in consideration, Jack, the rest of the way, is which way is that arrow pointing now? The arrow is in favor of Georgia Tech. All the little uh, key factors. We've got 17 fouls on Clemson, so one and one for Georgia Tech. Only six on uh, Georgia Tech, but uh, the next one will put Clemson into one and one. And here comes Grant for Grant. Horace Grant checks out. Harvey Grant checks in. Harvey was a red shirt last year, so he's a freshman. There's the arrow you were talking about. The lady possession would go to Georgia Tech. Harvey didn't play, obviously, as much as Horace last year and hasn't this year. But uh, you talk about identical twins, it's hard to tell those two apart. He had a real good game in the finals of the Music City Invitational against Vanderbilt with 11 rebounds as Yvonne Joseph misses a big free throw. Joseph's a 76% free throw shooter. Look good on that one. Seven points for Joseph. And a lead of four points for Clemson. Michael on the break, pulls up over Joseph. No, that's not a good shot to take. Price the other way. That'll be blocked. Over Hamilton, good defense. That was Vince Hamilton, and he can go up in the air. Not a good play by Hamilton. He made just a, made he, a good play at one end, and then got a little anxious the other way. Well, he, he had Grant wide open. Price goes up there. Hamilton really didn't block it, but he just forced the trouble, and Mark Price won the foul. 117 to go in the game. Bobby Crimmins, as always, animated on the sidelines. A four-point Clemson lead. He could do a commercial for a dry cleaner after this game. You take a look at that shirt. Morel Ripple still with the dribble. Good speed inside to Sally, who lost the ball out of bounds. Contact a little close. Sally wants a timeout. And that is the final timeout called by Georgia Tech. Let's watch that play again. Well, a little bit too much traffic right there to get a good passing lane. Sally almost gets his hand on it. His other hand was pinned. He just couldn't get control. Crucial turnover for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. 61 seconds remaining in this game. Clemson on top by four. Once again, want to remind you that our ACC basketball action continues tomorrow night at 7 o'clock from Chapel Hill as the Maryland Terrapins take on the North Carolina Tar Heels. 7 o'clock ball game. Check your local listings for the coverage in your area. Should be a good ball game indeed. We'll watch uh, Lefty Grizzell's uh, club go against uh, a North Carolina team, Billy, that, as you said, quietly going about it because so many of their games have been far from home. Well, they have. They've played some good competition, hand-picked their opponents pretty well and some others, uh, have played on neutral courts in most cases. They'll be back in the friendly confines of Carmichael tomorrow. Saw Maryland last week against NC State. They do have their problems in the middle in regard to a power-type center, but they have an awful lot of quickness and explosive perimeter shooting. North Carolina over in Tokyo and Hawaii and Florida. Not a bad recruiting tool as well on the way to getting that good record. Well, I don't think anybody came home with uh, any uh, dysentery, so, you know, I guess that's all right, too. They've been eating an awful lot of rice on that trip. Georgia Tech will pick up Clemson in the backcourt with man-to-man -man pressure. Boy, had they converted, and it was a two-point ball game. That's a big turnover. Oh, good catch by Hamilton. Ahead to Marshall, and he is fouled inadvertently by Dalrymple. Inadvertently by Dalrymple, but not so by Marshall. He knew exactly where Dalrymple is. He ran right in front of him. He's a classy young player. Third turn on, third personal on Bruce Dalrymple. Grayson Marshall is just a 56% free throw shooter, but I think some of that, again, is what you have with Dwayne Burrell, Billy, and then he's the freshman adjusting to the college game. He's going to shoot into a background of the Tech students. Boy, look, who's the cucumber there? And 
you like to have a guard that's going to have the ball in his hands at the end of the game to be able to make free throws. So he's wanted to build up that percentage. But the Michael Jordan tongue deal. Because if it works for Jordan, it'll work for himself. Six points. That could have been all she wrote. Price all the way. Alley oop, no rebound comes out to Michael. And Marshall ahead of the pack for the lay in. That's the ball game. Big win for Cliff Ellis. First time in the history of Clemson University basketball. One of their coaches won his opening game in the ACC. Dal Ripple loses the ball out of bounds, but they say it was last touched by Chris Michael. 37 seconds remaining in the game. Inside to Dal Ripple. Dal Ripple with 23, but it's not going to be enough. We get a foul in the backcourt by Dal Ripple, his fourth. I don't see timeouts up there, Jack, but how many timeouts does Georgia Tech have? I think they're out of their timeouts because they had to use so many of them early in the second half. Well, all they can do is foul now the rest of the way. There's Cliff Ellis. What a job he has done getting this club off to a great start. Clemson, they hang on here, would go to 9-2 and two on the year. Georgia Tech would drop to 10-3. That shot... Actually, they threw something down at Marshall and out of the stands. He's got a right that, to be mad. You that, always that have some idiot in the stands causing problems. It would have been interesting to see what the official would have done had he been hit on that. Now, Bobby Crimmins will stand up. He's a real classy sport. He'll ask these people to stop that. Our Holly Farms players of the game from Georgia Tech, Bruce Dalrymple with a great night. And from Clemson, another superb effort for Vince Hamilton with his 27 points. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the ACC to be distributed to the institutions under a conference-approved plan in the name of these two players. Dalrymple in the lane. Rebound controlled by Clemson. Dalrymple got a pass in his five. If you're Raymond Jones, you do not want to commit a foul. You're better off letting the fella just go ahead, put the shot up, and take your chances, because you want that clock to keep running. 24 seconds remaining. An eight-point Clemson lead. Dalrymple on the night with 23 points. He is five of six from the foul line. If he makes this first one, this far down, well, that doesn't make any difference now, but this far down, he'd be smart to miss the second one because they need a lot of points in a hurry. Best effort for Bruce since he scored 26 in an exhibition against the Marathon Oil team that opened up the year. 24 now for Dal Ripple. Ahead to Michael on the quick break. Oh, what it anyway. That ought to be, that ought to tell the story right there. If you're Georgia Tech, you say, hey, it was not in the cards. This ball is blocked and knocked out of the hands of Michael and goes in anyway. Long pass, good catch by Michael. You see, right there on the wrist goes Mark Bright. The ball goes perfectly in anyway. I would say it wasn't in the cards. Chris Michael never got him any easier than those two. And if you're a Clemson fan, you think this team will sell some tickets up there? I said Death Valley before. What's the name of that gym? Little John up there. Little they John ought to sell Chelsea. some tickets to watch this team play. Hey, 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 hey. Rebound, Raymond Jones on the miss. Bruce Dalrymple is fouled out of the ball game. Bruce Dalrymple sits down after a good effort tonight with 24 points, 17 in the second half. But for Georgia Tech, Billy, here's a club. I take it back, that's only four personal, so they recount. As you look at a happy Cliff Ellis, but a concerned Bobby Crimmins. This is two straight losses in the conference, and one of them here at home where they had only lost two games the last two years. Well, I would be willing to say that uh, any of the experts who sometimes I try to call myself one would have said Georgia Tech would probably lose at NC State. They would win at Wake Forest and win here. And, they would, and everything has been just the opposite for them. Grayson Marshall joyfully throws the ball in the air as Clemson comes up with a surprising but most impressive 90-81 to 81 victory over the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech, the ninth-ranked team in the country, but they fell prey to this guy right there, Cliff Ellis' club. As Cliff sets AC, or I should say at least Clemson history, Billy, 
first time a Clemson coach making his conference debut has come up with a victory. Cliff has really got to be pleased with the way things are going. He really has to. He has this team in incredible physical condition. They ran up and down this court as well as any team I've seen in the ACC, period. I mean, over the time I've been covering it, uh, the teams are in excellent physical good shape. They know how to play the game. He's got some excellent athletes out there. It will be a tough team to beat. Tomorrow night on the ACC Basketball Network, Maryland and North Carolina. It all gets underway at 7 o'clock Saturday. ACC Sports Center with Paul Cameron at 1 o'clock. And the doubleheader, North Carolina and Virginia at 1.30. Clemson at Wake Forest, a 3.30 start. This ACC telecast has been a presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Coming up on the WBTV News Night Report, more than 1,600 Charlotte Mecklenburg students. Oh, that's a lot better than he is, at least up front. Clemson, Michael trying to say that does. 